And we are live. Good evening. Good evening. Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> hi there. Hi there. I can't see any viewers so far. Okay, there is four guys already. Ten people. What's up? What's up? Hi Vlad. Hi Miguel. Hi Anders. Hi hi hi. Hi Denmark. Ooh, we've got different countries here. Cool. So seems like that would be especially mostly the guys. New York City. No way. Okay, I wanted to say mostly guys from my time zone. New York City isn't my time zone. What time is it now in New York City? 9 p.m. here, so that would be what? 2 p.m. New York. Is it 2 p.m. in New York City? And you're not working. <laughs> hello, hello, Timothy. Nice to see you all. So guys, there are some news I have for you. Canada, 3 p.m. What's up, what's up? Salud. Was it France? Salud. Okay, can't see. Uh, you mean the, the brightness or something? Okay, so it's the evening here and I might have more light maybe. Does this help a little bit? Switzerland, hi, la, hi, hi. Romania, hi, Vlad. <clears throat> okay, guys. I think, <laughs> hi, Poland, hi, Costa Rica, UK. Wow, New Orleans. Orleans. New Orleans reminds me of one of my favorite songs of Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi. Philippines! Como estas? <laughs> wow, I, I love live events. Hi Latvia! It, it is so amazing, you know, answering your comments, which is more and more difficult for me because there is just so many. Hello Alexander, aus Berlin. Uh, it, it, is, it is kind of connection, but be, having you live and seeing this number here 82 people watching me and Chile what's up Florida North Korea wow it is just amazing really so let's just start with with the news I have for you so first off seems like my new phone which is the LG G6 that I got for free from LG will stay on the channel I got it it was uh, essentially for my Icelandic uh, trip, but seems like it will stay. So uh, using it, using it for lives, uh, live events on different different events and and parts of the world will be just amazing, as far as it, as the internet uh, will allow us. So there will be more more lives, that's for sure. And also, I have planned now uh, different topics for our live events and here is the number one number one topic is the project so the projects are coming back to the to the channel i'm going to show you and explain to you where i get the stuff um, why i choose certain model or bike and how i do the the um, re resurrection of the bike so how i do the project and it will be in two parts part one is life because we're gonna make some decisions together here and part two uh, where I'll be replacing different stuff or painting the, the bike or, or so will be just recorded by me and, and uploaded to YouTube so two parts on each project that's that's the first thing the second thing is also that you are so often asking me hi Jersey uh, you are so often asking about different brands what do I think about felt what do I think about Cannondale what do I think about Stöckli or any other brands so um, since I got the phone and I have pretty good connection like all over the, the Poland at least I would do some deals with the dealers with the with the stores I would just write travel to the store and do live events there so if you ask me then what about giants I'm going to the largest giant store in Poland or Germany if they allow me and I will do a live event there. So you ask me about certain models, I will weigh the bike, I will show you the difference between different um, components and I think that will be much better than just making the episode like uh, searching online 
or having just one bike and telling you that if you pay $500 more, it would be that, $500 less, it would be that. So I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, first lag. Okay, about lags. Uh, I, I have just the L LTE uh, internet here in my home. It's actually not my home. It's a place that I, that I rent and there is no other uh, internet connection here. So there is Canyon. There will be Canyon, that's for sure. That's for sure you, you're gonna have Canyon because so many people uh, are asking about Canyon. Uh, by the way, we have upcoming um, um, episode about Exceed. I got Exceed on SRAM uh, GX, pretty sweet bike, getting laggy. Mm. Yeah, that's my internet connection, so I'm sorry for that. It's gonna be like that. Uh, so I, we hope to move from this place within a year, but I'm still kind of, you know, surviving on the, on, on the YouTube money and it's my only job, so... I hope it, it's gonna it's it's gonna be within one year. We're gonna move out to our own place and have really really fast uh, internet there. But other lives that I'm going to do on the in the stores when they have uh, pretty fast internet, I'm gonna do there and it's gonna work fine for us. So that was the second thing I wanted to tell you. Number one, projects. First part will be live and the second will be recorded by me and uploaded. Second, that will be live events in the bicycle stores. So you're gonna you're gonna be able to compare anything, the sizes, components, the real weight, and anything. And then the third thing is that I would like to have like the first part of our life, like just right now, some updates about me, what's 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 happening, what are the plans, uh, what are what what are the plans for the future, and just saying hello to you, answering some questions. And after maybe 10 minutes, we are now seven minutes live, we would go to the topic. And then guys, I would ask you to not to write too many comments uh, because I'd like to kind of discuss with you. So when I ask the question, I, I hope you will be answering because there will be pretty many decisions to be made together. I want to do this project with you guys. Um, and then when we finish the topic, uh, on the on the YouTube, you're gonna be able to watch this this episode once more, but there will be links to certain parts of uh, of uh, of the live. So you 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 don't have to you won't have to uh, watch through this hello how are you part. Just go straight to the topic like this um, uh, this project for example, and then at the end once more who 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 will be able to stay with me and maybe will have more questions more personal. I'm gonna answer those. Okay, so I think we can proceed to the topic of, uh, of our life today and it's the Cannondale. So I'm going to tell you how I do the project, why this one, how it happens, how much money I have spent already and how much money I left. So $400, we're going to do bike, I think well under uh, 9 kilos for $400, the frame just is just so durable it will it will last for another ten, tenth of a tenth of thousand kilometers so let's just uh, go to some details I'm gonna switch the camera and here is our Cannondale so why Cannondale you know I love Cannondale even though I'm riding now uh, Merida Cannondale is still one of my favorite band, brands um, and but this Cannondale I just got from my viewer so I got email from one of you uh, and the guy Thomas who, who, who did it said I want to give you this bike because it needs some restoration and I hope you will just do it well and I will see see it in your episode and I said okay that would be nice but I will obviously make some money <laughs> on this project so I would at least pay you it was like $78 so he said okay we agreed on this one so $70 five dollars seventy five dollars spent on this bike first thing when i do these projects is the story of the bike so what i know uh, this guy is working with the computers he's the it uh, professional pro professional guy and he got this bike for free from his boss and that's all i know i know that he made lots of thousands of kilometers of, on this bike so i think it would be maybe 30 40 maybe fifty thousands of kilometers on this bike. The second thing, what's the story about this bike? What I can see 
is that the only original thing of this bike part is the frame, maybe the seat post. All other parts have been changed. Now, guys, what year it is? That's the question to you. What's the year, the model year of this bike? Red, yellow, Seiko and Cat 3. So, do you know? Exactly Arc Linux. This is 98. You can find it out by checking the, uh, the number under the BB. Uh, area and it says J E where J stands for 1998 and E that's A B C D E that means the fifth month of the year so May 1998 May 1998 which is even more exciting for me because does it remind you on any other bike on the channel this is the bike I started my YouTube channel, the first one, the Polish one, two years ago. It was exactly two years ago. And that was my first project, $500, the second one, no, the, the first one actually. $500 bike, 9, 1998, my Canada killer. So that this is the icon of my, uh, <laughs> of, of my YouTube story. Uh, and this is also 1998. So, Cat 3. We know that uh, Cannondale uh, started making Cat 4 in 1999. So even without looking at the serial number, you would know it is older than, than 99. So this is 1998. Uh, now, another question to you. What was the weight of the frame in 1999 of the Cat 4? Not 3, but the next one, Cat 4. I couldn't find the... the uh, data about CAD 3. But how do you think? What would be the uh, the weight of the road bike in 1999? I mean, I mean uh, the frame, the frame only. It was pretty light. No, no, no. The frame was exactly arc linear. It was, it was actually 1.25. Uh, so 2.8 uh, pounds, yeah, 2.8 pounds or um, 100, uh, one, no, sorry, well, that's 1350 grams, okay? Now, the newest alloy bike from Cannondale, which I absolutely love, it is amazing, that's Cannondale Cat 12, they skipped Cat 11 and we have now Cat 12, you know what's the weight of that frame? It's around 200 grams uh, saved. So that would be about 1150 grams or so, or 1100 grams. No, it's not 900. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the alloy one, the Cat 12. So that's about uh, 1100 grams. Yeah, so 1999, this is eight. So this, I think this would be... Do -do -do -do. Do Connecting, connecting, connecting. Okay, we are connected. I'm sorry for that. Yes, uh, I will upload that. Yeah, LTE. Yeah, I, I don't have anything else. So sorry for that. We just have to, we have to wait until we <laughs> will be able to move. Anyways, I think this one would be about, uh, I lied about that one. Uh, that one wasn't 1350, it was lighter. 2.8 pounds, how many kilos is that? But I think this one would be about 1350, not more than 1400 grams, not more, that's for sure. And that's 20 years ago. So of course I love the newest Cat 12 and the Cat 12 will be much more comfy than this one. This is like super stiff, you can just, you can use it as a gravel bike if you can feature uh, some, some wider tires. <laughs> I can it. <laughs> Uh, so, pretty nice frame. I love the frame. The geometry has changed, as you have noticed, that's, that's correct. Especially the front area and the longer chain stays, so the rear triangle is longer. Uh, but this is pretty cool. So, I have this catalog. This is 1998, guys. 
and uh, and this bike is right here. Deet, deet, deet. Isn't it exciting? That's that's the piece of the history. That year, I was just finishing my high school, going to college. So that would be this bike. And we can see it was uh, different components, but we can see that that year they still had this old type anchor headset. On this bike, it's been changed. So the fork isn't uh, original. It is Cannondale. Let me show you. It is Cannondale and Time because Cannondale uh, was purchasing the forks from Time. Time was making the forks for them. I think that that would be maybe 2001 or two, the fork. I couldn't find it in the catalog just yet, but the, we have the A headset. So that's the newer uh, type of the headset. The stem is ugly in my opinion. The handlebars, the old type look ugly as well. So we are changing this. The wheels are pretty sweet. The wheels could look cool, spin nice, both front and rear. So the wheels will stay and we have some nice 40 millimeters um, of the uh, of the rim dip, uh, depth, so that's that's pretty fine. And then we have some Campagnolo. And now I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna check your knowledge about Campagnolo. Does any one of you write Campi? Oh, sorry for that. Campi Veloce. You know Campi Veloce. It is pretty cheap, extremely robust group set. I love Veloce. I loved uh, Centaur as well. Um, pretty cheap, 10 speed. So we've got 10 speed. Now tell me guys, what is this? Will you know this? What kind of front derailleur is this? Shimano guy. Hi Shimano guy. Uh, I'm also, I'm actually Shimano SRAM and Campi guy. Each of these brands make great components. Okay. You can see this, that means Campi. But it says here, Daytona. Do you know what Daytona is? Hello, ABY Auto from Romania. Daytona, you know Daytona? Ah, there is no guys who, who have been riding bikes in 2000. So, Daytona, no, it's not American, it's Campaniolo. Uh, I think it was released in in year 2000 uh, and just right after Daytona uh, there uh, the Campagnolo came up with the Centaur. So this was just before the Centaur. We have some nice groups in here uh, and let's go and see uh, what what's the condition of the bike. So I'm always checking the wheels. Um, the hubs were, are pretty nice and also they fit the bike. These are not the original ones but these are shiny, uh, sorry for, for moving the camera, shiny silver and the brand is GPM, you know GPM? Okay, GPM, but it's shiny silver. So a bit of polish and it will look awesome, it will fit the bike a lot. Uh, the next thing is the shifters. We have Campy here, but here's the problem. Uh, they have lost the indexing. So, you know, those two triggers, we have one for, let's say, upshifting, uh, Campanello call it downshifting, and the other one, so there is no indexing here. Uh, I'm gonna try to fix this. Mm, did you know that until not so, so long time ago, you could buy each part individually for the Campanello? That was something something awesome now uh, it's it let's go back let's go back okay yeah um i think okay are we online we are online yeah the village ergo will yeah will, yeah it will um it might be dirty, but it, it's, I think it's just, just wear out. Those teeth inside, they just wear out because this is some serious mileage on the bike, some serious mileage, guys. So, um, I'll try to fix it, but I think our cost will be 10-speed uh, Campy shifters. The groups that doesn't matter here, 
derailers will stay. We have some, some small play here, but it is very small. It might be even it, when it was new. And I'm gonna replace the crankset because this is the FSA Gossamer with the non-original uh, chain ring. So it doesn't really look good. And now just look at this. Where is my chain wear indicator? Okay, I'm gonna show you something. So, this bike was just hard working thing. Um, if I checked 0.5, there is that much of a play. So let's see, even 0.75 still play. That means this goes to the garbage. And since uh, the chain has been used for I think this this stuff has maybe 10,000 kilometers. So the teeth of the cassette also don't look very good. Okay, I've been showing you that on one of my episodes. If you look at the this is the cassette 105. Um, there were two two chains I have used on this cassette, but you can see that these. This, uh, how, do we, how do we call this? These not grooves, this shape is quite even on both sides, like almost symmetrical. Here you will see that at the front of, of this, um, of this uh, groove or ah, of the shape here, there is lack of material here. That means even if we put some new chain and even if the chain would work on the cassette, it will wear out much quicker. So both the cassette and the chain set has to be replaced. And for those, uh, yeah, new drive, yeah, we we gonna we gonna have new uh, drive train. For those who don't know me yet, uh, I have uh, another channel. It's a Polish one with uh, almost sixty thousand or fifty something thousand subscribers. I have already asked guys there from, from the live just before, like an hour ago, who has the cassette, 10-speed cassette, 10, uh, Campy, 10-speed Campy chain uh, and Campy cranks. It, it can be also this older type with a square tapered um, axle. That's okay. That's, that's fine with me uh, because I, I want to keep it uh, campy and if I'm not gonna be able to if I won't be able to uh, fix those shifters then we have to buy shifters but just count with me we have $75 so we have what 30, let's say $320 left I think for the shifters for the chain and for the cassette and the crank set we're gonna buy used ones 10 speed campy is now really cheap that's why I'm not uh, going for 11 speed 10 speed is cool. Compact crank set, 10 speed cassette. I think it would cost us not more than $150. And then I'm gonna repla replace the stem and some compact. This is so, I don't like it. Uh, and handlebar handlebars. And then there is some old flight uh, saddle. I'm gonna replace that. I'm gonna do some polishing of the seat post and it's gonna be beautiful. Okay, and so the question to you will be essentially about two things. Okay, question number one. Look at the frame. Zit. Okay. Can you see this? This doesn't look good. Yeah, this is rust. This is aluminum, but this is rust. That's that's true. So um, I have already asked uh, guys just here in Poland what would they do with uh, with the frame, uh, and some would say just paint the frame, but just wait with the answer. There is some rubbing here, but still very good looking. Now look, look at. The welds, these are lovely. These are much smoother than on, on the CAT 10 and CAT 12. M way smoother. You cannot just compare those. Super smooth. So, I'm really sorry for, for Cannondale that they, they, they no longer produce bikes uh, in the States. That's just, 
just something I, I would love them to continue. There is some rust here and also here on the rear triangle, uh, for example, right there. So we've got some rust here and one additional problem is all right, is this. So this thread got loosened. Can you see that? Um, <laughs> I did fix it on one of my oldest bikes. Uh, just it was like homemade fix, but it it wasn't really professional. So if you have um, if you have some uh, ideas on how to fix this, just let me know. I mean, it should look professional. And we should not see any kind of uh, glue here outside. I would like to, to keep this just original look. So how, to, how do you fix this? Uh, somebody told me that the uh, RJ, the bike guy, has done it. Uh, I, I know him, He's a very, very good YouTuber. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna try to find his episode about this. Because we're gonna fix this. So... Finally, the question to you is, yeah, okay, so he, he's made it, RJ the bugger has it, cool, okay, we're gonna fix it. I would love to keep the original paint, really. So I was thinking about maybe just using, you know, sandpaper and even, even uh, just, you know, showing the original aluminum uh, color a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there, and a little bit there, and then uh, spray only the the transparent uh, lac on it. What do you think about it? Oh, there is a link. Thank you, thank you, Kenneth. Super. That's very helpful. Very very helpful. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do gravel grinder. That's for sure. We're gonna do it. Clear coat. Exactly. What do you think? Paint all. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kenneth. Okay, so should I paint it or not? Because um, I know that one of my future projects will be the silver, uh, the silver alloy. So I'm gonna just strip the paint and not paint it like I did with my white killer, if you remember, what, one of my older uh, projects. The white was cool, but I would like to have the just original alloy. I need primer. Ah, oh, that's, yeah, that's the question, okay. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, and then spraying the primer all over will, will <laughs> cover the, the paint anyway. Yeah. Uh-huh. Touch up the damages areas. So, yeah, I was thinking also, um, do you remember some of the Cannondale's bike? I, I had it, if you, it was F800 SL, I think, in, from 2000 and, what was it, seven or so. They had the flames uh, on the frames. You remember? So maybe we could like do some some graphic, you know, just around this area here. So so that we would only, so that we would only paint this area, right? And then we can put uh, we can put the the primer first. Just I was doing with my white white one. Change wheels. You know what, G Gabriel? I was. I was actually going to keep the wheels because the wheels are in good condition. They have uh, those arrow spokes and the bearings are quite cool. And the silver uh, hubs just, just fit here. And you know, now we have like mid, mid dip section now on these wheels. And, and it saves us a lot of money. Paint all or paint nothing. Yeah, now that's the question. So guys, in... Uh, my future video, perhaps tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna ask you the question. At the beginning of the video, you're gonna be able to choose between paint all or just do some, I don't know what. Just, uh, just, just some, some, some place or just fix it. Uh, and I did, I, I'm gonna do the same on my uh, Polish channel and then I will, I will just, you know, count uh, how many guys would like to have uh, the whole bike painted, but I would, I would really miss the original stuff. And you know what I miss? What I miss a lot, I miss, and I truly miss it, this. It says here, uh, championship proven, made in USA. 
This was so cool. Um, I'm not against Taiwan or China by no means, and they can do high quality stuff. Um, but somehow, you know, Cannondale, in my opinion, didn't, didn't get cheaper when they moved over to Taiwan. And it was just so nice to see the manufacturer there. And they were always saying that the people there in that manufacturer, they've been working there for 20 years or 25 years. Now it's all closed. So, yeah. Canada press fit. Uh, I don't like press. I don't want to have press fit. Thread, that was a genius man who invented threads. And it's awesome stuff. Uh, and guys from Canada told me that uh, making the frame for press fit um, versus, uh, versus the threaded one is much more expensive because you have to be extremely uh, accurate with the press fit. But I know some guys uh, saying that press fit may... Do, 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 do. Once more, I'm back. Start with the colored areas and see how it looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that. Fred, that's a good idea. Fred pointing with his finger. <laughs> that was a good idea, Fred Craven. Yeah, we can do that. I think for sure we can do that. Yeah. We would start with just, uh, that would be one area on both sides. Then here around the head tube, uh, right there and right here. And we'll just see how it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be exciting. Yeah, the right red color. Yeah, uh, just Oli, I, I was thinking about that. That's why I said that's what I say that maybe we would make some graphics, you know? It's impossible to uh, to get the right red because look at the paint. It's it's already super uneven. Okay, look at the paint here. Yeah. So, you can see this? I'm unable to clean this. Can you see this? It looks like some ice cream uh, on the frame. I'm unable to clean this actually. So there is many different spots and areas and the, the red is not the same red here and here. So yeah, trying to just cover it, finding the right red wouldn't be possible. I was thinking either on just removing the, uh, you know, the, uh, the paint and showing that this is just old bike you know, uh, how is it called? Patine? How, patina? How do we call it in English? Patina? You know what I mean. Yeah, we just remove the, uh, the paint and put some, uh, some clear coat. Yeah. So I was thinking about that. Or option number two, putting some flames or some just anything. It wouldn't be 100% original then, but still, still, you know, handmade in USA, Seiko, Cannondale. And you would, yeah, you know, from the color, many Canada lovers would, would just tell you right away. This is 1998 Cat 3 frame. Canada fetish. <laughs> uh, I, I just love Canada's really good bikes. There is, there is a couple of brands that, that, that I really admire. One of those is Canada, for sure. It's also because I was racing. I had been racing when I was really serious about it. I'm, I'm back once Once again, I'm serious about it, but... When I was uh, between 12 and 18, anything, pretty much anything besides sleeping and eating and learning was, was uh, cross country. Yeah, I know there are decals. I, I, can, al I can also have, uh, like make decals. That's not, no problem for me. Yeah, but whoo -hoo. But you know then, wow, really painting it with the decals and everything. Maybe, maybe that would be a good idea. All right. Uh, any, anyway, we gonna we gonna we gonna do that uh, on the next vlog, on the next episode. So that question will be will be for you guys, uh, an open question, and that's pretty much it, pretty much it. So we know the fork has been changed, but it's good. It's still Cannondale Time fork. It pretty much looks like the original one, but we have the A headset, so no anchor here. We need uh, shifters, crank set chain and cassette i think it will be ah oh, just just awesome uh, what tires uh, the tires i i know these are 23s uh, it says turbo elite black belt um, 
Hey, this is specialized. Okay. Okay, these are specialized tires. Uh, yeah, and one important thing uh, that I have checked is that there is enough room for 25s, my dear. So this is 23. Uh, but on the roads we have here, in my area at least, 25s are, are just quicker, faster, more comfy and faster. Because we don't have like super smooth tarmac here. Not so much. So there is place for 25s. Go classic, 22, 21. No, no, no. This is, you see, this is like a vintage bike, uh, but this is gonna be bike someone will be just training and racing on. Really, it will be just used. It, it won't be just hang on the wall and, and I have vintage bike from Sick Biker. No, no. Brake pads are just uh, as new and the brake calipers aren't Campagnolo. Maybe replacing those with Campy would be nice. This is 105s. And brake pads uh, are just look like new. Replaced not so much time ago. Of course, uh, the uh, cables, all the cables I'm changing and I'm always buying the good ones, not the cheapest ones. So I think I will spend up to $50, maybe, okay, maybe, maybe $40 for the cables. Yeah. 32, uh-huh. Yeah, a 32, you mean the tires, uh, it would not fit 32. I think 27 would be max, but 25 is like a sweet spot in my, in my opinion. So there will be no rubbing for sure, even if you go, go like, like really hard, uh, and 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 just nice alrighty so my friends uh, there will be an article I'm gonna just I'm gonna just go to over to you uh, okay that's all my stuff here I'm back I'm back okay cool so um, there will be an article on sigbiker.com uh, about this, uh, this project. All the project will be there also, sigbiker.com. And you can write me in the comments any suggestions. Also, if you have something, like maybe you have a whole group set, a campy group set, that would be awesome to buy just a whole group set, I would do it. So definitely check out uh, sigbiker.com, uh, maybe tomorrow or, or day after tomorrow, it will be there. Uh, so that would be the the main part of the project finished. Thank you for that. So those who are watching this video after being live, so, so uh, just after being uploaded to, to YouTube, that's it. Thank you for for watching. And part number two should come within not more than ten days. I will be able to get all the parts within a week, I think. Then I just put it all together, and and we're gonna have really nice bike. Um, okay, the weight of the bike. This bike, uh, how do you think? How many kilos we have here? 1998 with some deeper section wheels and some veloce components and some really old stuff. It is 9.3, so pretty good. And we will go under 9, no problem. Yeah, 9.4, Simon, very close. It's 9.3, this bike. So, this part is, uh, is now over, thanks so much for watching and guys, always uh, after recording the live, there will be a link in the description and in the, in the pinned um, post where you can just click it and skip the welcoming part and so, so just go right, to, right into the topic and then at the end we're gonna, we, we're gonna talk with those uh, who, who would like to stay a bit longer. So 9.3, you say it's heavy, it's pretty sweet uh, weight. With these components, man, 9.3 Campagnolo Veloce. Check out the newest bikes on Campi Veloce and you will see uh, what's the weight. It would be pretty, pretty, pretty much uh, over 10 kilos. So Cannondale makes really sweet alloy frames. Thanks so much uh, for watching. Telling, uh, I'm telling that to those who, who just wanted to see the project. And now, guys, if you have some questions, thank you, William. If you have some questions and you want to stay for a couple of minutes uh, longer, uh, we can... We can uh, thank you, Vernon, and, and see you soon. Uh, we can just stay for a bit longer. Mm. The original weight we need. <laughs> yeah. Just a couple of updates. So I told you about all the projects um, linked to the live events. So 
project with the bikes and now live events in the bicycle stores. So if you... Yeah, what brand you wanted me to feature? You ask about Canyon. What bicycle store would you like me to visit and do live there so that you can ask about anything? The real weight, I'm gonna go there with my own scale and so measuring or comparing geometries. Rose, that's no problem. I can do Rose for you. I can even go to Germany uh, if you wanna if you wanna see Rose. I had Xeon and it was a sweet bike. MTB project. The, the next MTB project will be in 12 days. The bike is already there. I can tell you, it will be a very quick uh, project. It's, it's gonna be Cannondale Raven. I was happy to buy original one, almost. Uh, I just bought uh, the tires, already have, have those. And I'm just gonna go to Germany, uh, drive to Germany uh, to, to, to pick up the bike. And show you so Cannondale once more it will be Cannondale it was just coincidence I was just it was coincidence that I found the original one beautiful bike specialized or giant Dartmoor maybe a Dartmoor I'm not sure whether I'm we have some big stores with Dartmoor I'm gonna check it out Trek okay so specialized giant Trek just as I, I thought you would you would ask uh, if you race, will road biking help? Yes, yes, and yes. Cross country racing, train on the road bike as much as you can. So if you are good in uh, in technique, uh, always do some riding on the course. So like know the course, uh, see some previews, some you know how do we call it the course preview. So know the course, know what's in terms of the you know technical advantage uh, challenges you're gonna you're gonna meet, but train on the road bike. Uh, interval sessions, uh, long rides, uh, endurance training—it's all on the road bike. You're not gonna be able to train as efficient as uh, as you could on the road bike using just the in, uh, the MTB. Hi Wojtek, interval sweet spots, tempos on all road bike. I agree. Uh, when I was a junior <laughs> in the high school, I was only training on the mountain bike. I was super strong on the climbs, but super slow on the flat sections. And I'm working on that right now. I've purchased my first road bike in uh, when I was 28. And I started riding mountain bike racing when I was 12. So 28 or 27. That was my first road bike. Many things have changed for me. Okay, do you will ride in MTB Marathon? Germany! Nikki, are you from Germany? Please, um, okay, if, if your comment dis disappears because after live event I'm gonna be able only to read like the last 30 comments and so please contact me somehow. You can contact me on sigbikerdenny at gmail.com because I'm, I'm searching for some German forums because I'd like to go for some marathons and cross country races to Germany. Uh, and for sure Alpstadt. I need to go over that course in Alpstadt because there will be World Championships uh, in Alpstadt. I missed the, the uh, World Cup, but it would be really cool to have somebody I know from Germany, Niki. Uh, MTB, MTB. Uh, it will be MTB in Germany. I, I would love to. So if, if someone would tell me where is the nice cross-country course or some nice marathon in Germany, I would go there. Make a video about new Claris R2000. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice idea. I'm gonna make a video about new Diori first M6000 because it's already in the store, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna purchase that for my Kona project. Uh, I'm 28. No, I'm 37 right now. So 28, uh, 27 years old. I was when I purchased first road bike. Uh, and I became much faster. Uh, the, okay, because that's an interesting question. The first thing that has changed when I switched from, re from training on the MTB mountain bike to road bike was the cadence. And that was everything I needed. I was riding like be before like 65, 70 RPMs. 80 was, was high for me. Now, you know, cruising at 95 is no problem for me and I'm much quicker. 
much quicker and no problems with knees. So road bike, road bike. Many people ask me, I want to be racing on MTB and I have, let's say, 2,500 bucks. I would, I would tell him, buy two bikes. Really, cheap mountain bike and cheap road bike. Cool. The handlebars. Uh, remove the handlebars. Are you writing? You're writing to someone else. Okay. Cool guys, so that would be it. Uh, so you know I'm gonna go to Germany for some racing, uh, but now I'm training really hard. I'm training hard and uh, 15th of July there will be cross country um, championships, national champions championships here in Poland. So I'm gonna prepare for that. It's gonna be probably very interesting course. Uh, with the noise in your handlebars when you push them This doesn't go away, okay Okay, noisy handlebars, noisy handlebars, carbon or alloy? That's the first question uh, Carbon, use some carbon paste, okay So, uh, that's for sure, I am using carbon paste, but I have to tell you one thing When I've put carbon paste uh, on the seat post on my Cannondale, on this one here, because I want I wanted to tighten this uh, this screw a little bit with a little bit less uh, torque than than required. It's it's always good for the frame if you have the carbon paste, but it started to to giving me some some noise. So actually the paste helps but might cause uh, some noise, that's the first thing. Uh, I, would, I would for sure think about all the bolts in the, in the stem or handlebars, whatever, however you, you, you mount your handlebars. And uh, <laughs> sometimes it just won't go away. So <laughs> I, I've cleaned the seat post and everything in, on my bike, on my uh, FSI. But sometimes it's still, you know, giving me some, some noise, it cannot go away. Thank you, Vieko, Fran Vieko Franceschi. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, guys, that would be it. Uh, there will be much more racing uh, and I hope to get faster internet as soon as possible, but it won't be maybe even this year. This year. I hope this was, this was okay, this connection was okay. Oh, you just joined. Benjamin, you, you can just watch it. It will be there on YouTube in, in a couple of minutes. Thank you, DM, MTB. It's so nice. It's so nice to, to see you all from, from different countries, really. Moscow, Paka, Vladimir. Cheers, Benjamin. So, that would be it. There will be more racing. There will be much more live events. <laughs> Tell in English what's on my t-shirt. Okay, so this is my t-shirt. This is my custom Polish uh, YouTube channel t-shirt, uh, and it's pretty much it's pretty much saying why am I? You know, some guys are telling me, man, that's kind of sick always because pretty much everything I would do was was biking, and it means that um, mm -hmm, um okay. Cool. That's it. 50 minutes, guys, you've been with me. It is so nice. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to see you. I'm not sure whether it will be tomorrow, but the, the episode I'm preparing right now for you will be uh, comparing three different uh, suspensions. Upside down RockShox RS1, uh, the conventional one on the Fox 32, and then Lefty. So we're going to have three completely different forks <laughs> compared on one episode but that's something I'm comparing right now and then there will be there will be some uh, some technical skills I'm preparing for you ah, coming up coming up you saw the unboxing of this you saw the unboxing okay so there is there is a 60 or 90 minutes long episode about pretty much everything on your bike so you're gonna find it on just on one episode it will be much easier 
and then there will be there will be also um, 60 to 90 minutes long episode about training from the very beginning for the beginners 101 up to pretty advanced racing uh, cyclist all right so it was wow 100 guys so nice i am so happy having those those live events so it will see how it turns out uh, just watch out for the sickbiker.com uh, website the article will come there and you can comment and do any suggestions to me and see you soon good night greetings to germany and all the countries you are guys coming from it's so cool that something that is really healthy and and good for us cycling and environment environmental friendly just connects us bye bye